I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome back to Unashamed. As you, if you're watching, you can see that uh, we we have three boxes today. We have Zach in North Carolina. We have Al in the Southern Lair. I'm still in the old house. I hadn't made the transition, and then we got Solo Jace, which I think is a is this a first? This first time we've ever had just so. Jace in the in the lair. Uh, yeah, yeah. Phil's still down, but he's recuperating. He's he's getting better. He had yeah. the procedure, and we're hoping we've got our fingers crossed that maybe on the next podcast. There will be a Phil sighting, a proof of life uh, Phil appearance as well. Do you make sure he's not on any uh, pain pills or mind altering substances? <laughs> well, I'm not, not sure. confirmed it, or it, denied it's that. A, I do it know a, it's a I gamble either way. <laughs> it's a gamble. I do know that he has ascribed to quit saying give me a break after his third back break. He's like, I'm going to quit saying that. <laughs> he was he was serious. <laughs> Uh, give me a break. Okay, here's three of them. Right? Here's, here's three here's of four them. vertebrae. Like, well, if you keep saying that, Phil, this may continue to happen. So, and, st- and also, he probably needs to quit saying for crying out loud because he's probably done a lot he's, of that as well. Done, well, he's he was as close to crying recently as I've ever seen him. He was hurting so bad. So, Jay's our, our sister. I guess it takes a sister to think of things in a different way because you know the four of us grew up, and and I told Dad this recently. I'm like, Dad. I'm trying to be like super compassionate about your situation because obviously, you know, I feel bad that you feel so bad. I said, but I have to admit, I'm just going to be honest. It's hard for me to do it. And it's your fault. Like, because you raised me the way you did, I just have so little compassion and, and, uh, I, I have to fight through it. And so, so our sister Phyllis decided that we need to start bringing some food out to mom and dad because, you know, dad's been cooking a lot because mom's been down too. And so all of a sudden, when the call went out, one thing we do is we do a lot of cooking. So now we've taken so much food out. Dad's like, well, I can't even get the fridge open. You know, Willie brought out a slum going, Jason, Missy bringing food, Al's bringing food. He said, I got food everywhere. He said, but I will say one thing, you boys can cook. What did Willie bring? <laughs> Slum Gullion. That, that Gullion. means there's no name for what Willie cooks. He yeah, likes like, to I take heard of this various <laughs> ingredients. Well, that's what Phil called it. I don't even know if that actually is a it, word. It is a word. Slum, it called it we it's have Slum a, uh, Gullion? We have Slum a producer Gullion. replacement, if you can see, because uh, our regular producer, Maddie, is sick, because I called her saying I was going to be late because I was bringing food to Phil. She sounds and like Darth Vader. She went, hello. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> it just sounded so weird because she's got I the said, little she's got a nice little uh melody like voice you know when she yeah. talks she's got the high bounce i said is our guest there yet because we have a guest today so i won't be solo for long al but i know uh, it i'm excited about it and she guest. said i'm sick but uh mm-hmm. So anyway, I said, well, I'm bringing uh, Phil and Kay some food. And look, I had no place to put it. Kay was down there and Phil wasn't there. So I thought, well, Phil is going to do the podcast today. Because I said, where is Phil? And she said, I have no idea. I was like, well, there's no other. There's no, it's not like when you get down to where they're at, Yeah, there's nothing to go do. So if he's not there and he's not in the yard and he's not at the land, I thought, well, he? he's at the podcast. <laughs> But I found out he's he's at the doctor, so I guess it was scheduled. I, I don't know. Yeah, he's been missing. He's been missing us. He he te- yeah. he told me that he's like man. Well, I'm looking I- at this slum gullion, and if that's what he's been eating, that does not look good. Well, what <laughs> well, Phil but- Phil dubbed it that because it's just you throw a bunch of ingredients. But I'll have to say Willie's pretty good about it. Yeah, I mean, I mean they're usually cook. good. I have eaten a couple things that I thought I think this would have been better if it was separate and apart because <laughs> mm-hmm. i don't like casseroles. like the contribution the yeah, like yeah. slum gullion i'll do because they're kind of authentic louisiana cuisine like gumbos and what else? Yeah. is it a like, cajun dish yeah. is, is that is slum well, gullion I, I it, it's more of a genre zach it's it's like you just take everything and you keep adding okay. stuff kinda, into kinda it like a jambalaya it's yeah, like a jambalaya, jambalaya, jambalaya is yeah. a good is a good reference but with pasta instead of rice but yeah the the uh the willie made a dish one time he called it and i mean (laughs) hilariously called it an ode to pork (laughs) 
<laughs> and it yeah, literally like is every <laughs> every form of pork that you can imagine. Bacon, a, pork bacon, belly, pork chop. pork tenderloin, sausage, Ode ground sausage. I mean, it's it, and then cream cheese. It's got some cheese in it. It's you, just like you're kind of going Bubba Gump here on us. Well, right look, here. so so it's interesting. We we brought this up. I didn't know we were going to go here today, but the so last night. We had our our first kind of official dinner party at our new house. We had some of our friends from down here over. So we had like 10 people. And so we cooked. We decided to do like some favorites because everybody down here has a different favorite from Lisa. So we cooked some pork chops and mashed taters and, you know, just good country food. And we did white beans. So I felt like I was tapping into my inner willy on my white beans because I was, I was heating up my sausage. I, I cook them in the oven before I add them to the beans. Yep. And so I thought, you know, it'd be good with this is some bacon. Mm. And so then I took about six pieces of bacon and I just crisped it all at the same time. And I said, you know, what would also be good is some ham. So I'm digging yeah. around. I find some ham. So like, I just kept adding to it. So by the time I got through, Lisa said, is this beans or is this meat? Like, I said, and you said, yes, yes. <laughs> I said, I, yes, a man after my own heart. I would have added the, I'll tell you what makes the, the this is something by the way, now y'all, this is, you'll agree with this. You didn't agree on the cheese thing on the burger. Didn't really agree. Agreed. That's Did an I? understatement. <laughs> You literally, fe- I was really interested and I thought, oh, my yeah. son's got some competition. And then oh, I, I thought, was too. Nope. It's fake news. <laughs> fake well, news. And you, if you're going to do beans though, you have to, in my opinion, and or collard greens or turnip greens for that matter, you got to get the smoked ham hock mm-hmm. and you throw one of those in there. Oh, yeah. Utah, yeah. Utah might get eaten. Okay. Yeah. I agree that's with a that. That's Captain Obvious moment. That's okay. <laughs> that that was a thing forty years ago. That yeah, it's continued. still a thing. I just didn't mention it. I'm it's like, actually, man, I'm starting with a no. Ham that on. was already in there, and there was a ham bone in there from heb- from a honey baked ham. So yeah, we had all the basics. There's that. a spiritual lesson in here somewhere based on this conversation because I've been doing a lot of uh, prep this morning. I, I had to get up early this morning and do prep for our podcast, and. uh and we're all, we're mo- moving from this Jesus poem, which is awesome, and it's so kind of like you. It's have hard to, to leave it, to it, be honest. It's Jason, actually so good. like it kind of hit me that when you read it, you almost it kind of goes over your head. It's like, and so then the next part of it, because I mean, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He's he's before all things. In Him, all things hold together. The firstborn over the resurrection, you know, mm. firstborn from the dead. And uh, then all of a sudden, it's like the next phase is like, okay, this is where you were at in this process of creation and redemption. And it's like you were alienated or excluded, you know, because of your your minds and your behavior. But then he kind of gets into that maturity. And, uh, and so I've really been wrestling with what that means. I mean, what what is maturity? But even like the first thing you said when you said, Al, about you're not a compassionate person by nature because of the way right. we were raised. Right. But it kind of made me think we're all like that because I've really seen Phil mature. It's like once you get in Christ, the big sins usually evaporate quickly. I mean, like in my dad's life, he was basically headed to prison or the grave and it's like bam all of a sudden you see these big sins immorality and drunkenness and just breaking the law man's law i mean all this stuff just boom went away but then it's like that maturity in christ becoming the character having the character of christ slowly comes up you know it's like now i look at him there's a compassionate side to him i see with my mom and yep. It it really uh, kind of moved me looking at it that way because really it's not the good things you do or the bad things you don't do. It's you becoming the character of Christ because he's yeah. in you. So Now, that's, that's a really good point, and you're exactly right because here's the thing. I'm super compassionate with Lisa, with my kids, with my grandkids. Like if one of them gets hurt, you know, I'm instantly right there trying to help them. But if one, of, I'm saying it goes back to my raising because if it's one of y'all, like when Willie gets hurt, I just, it's funny to me. Yeah. I mean, it shouldn't be like he pulled his growing, uh, baptizing people. 
But I mean, Zach, when you told that story, I just started laughing. So it's like, it's funny with like, it goes back to when I was a child. It's hard for me to have that. Mm -hmm. But like going forward, I guess to your point, Jace, you, you watch that maturity live out in your life with those that you, you know, sort of take care of. And you're right with dad, the way he's been with mom and even with Phyllis, you know, cause like I, I tried to prepare Phyllis. I was like, look, my dad, I mean, you don't know him yet. So he's your dad too, but he's just, you know, he's not lovey dovey. He's not going to you right. know sit on the porch and have coffee. And then the first time I drive up, they're sitting on the porch having coffee. And I was like, okay, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a process that is a lifetime pursuit and i was i read i just got a new book in that just came out from uh i don't know how he wrote it from the grave i guess but dallas willard it just came out um i'm trying to get the name of it. it's not the kingdom uh anyways I, there's a, a place in the very beginning of the book where he's talking about jesus in the boat um when he's sleeping and the disciples are freaking out because of the storm and they're and he's talking about the difference between faith in christ which is certainly important and then but but also so that we might have the faith of Christ. And, mm. and and you see how Christ was in the storm. I mean, his faith, you know, the incarnated son of God, the in- incarnate Christ, he was fully convinced and full and fully believed that his heavenly father would take care of him. And I think that Jace's point is so key about maturity. Really what it is, it's ha- it's it's developing the faith of Christ, becoming like Jesus smelling like Jesus, acting like Jesus, wanting what Jesus wanted or wants, desiring what he desires. It is a, it's a, it is a new life, but the, you don't just like flip the switch on and Phil's a prime example. I mean, to see Phil now and then try to juxtapose that to what, how I remember him when I was 11, 12 years old, there was no, you know, emotional affirmation. There was no, I mean, it was, you know, he's, he was saved and he was like, yeah. walk, and he got off all, but I mean, you're right, Jace. I mean, it is. Well, I had, life. The, I had the same thing about even looking at that word that we broke down the Hebrew word, you know, the, in the beginning and talking about that yeah. for and through, but it's, it's not just doing good things. It's not just not doing bad things. He literally is in you. And so mm-hmm. those character traits, the ones we don't like, you know, gentleness, self-control, compassion, they just start to form, but it's a process, you know? Yeah, so, sort of <clears throat> sort of like we were talking that last podcast in John 6 when, you know, Jesus had fed those people and then they come back for more and they're like, what good things must we do? And he says, the, the good thing you need to do is believe in me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that yeah. to bring this back to food, it's, it's what I'm saying. When, you, when you're a babe in Christ and, and you understand that, this is everything's new. But you don't see a 45-year-old man show up to an adult party with a baby bottle saying, no, I'm going to go with this. You know, that, 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 that's ridiculous. So, Zach, when I'm saying you gave that recipe, once you brought up the craft processed <laughs> cheese, it's like, nope, immature cooking skills. If that is your secret ingredient. He's, he still has some growing I to mean, do. I mean, it just all fell apart and became just a horror show. It went from a recipe to something. And they were like, can we believe anything he said? Like, yeah. says, the ma- says the man who hasn't tried it. I, at least I would say be humble enough, because that's also in the Bible, to try it before you criticize it. Just right. Let me give it. you the verse. So our guest is here, so let me just oh, give you the verse. When I was a child, I talked like a child. Well, you, know, I, you remember the verse. But when I became a man, I matured. I left the craft singles right <laughs> where they were at childhood. Okay. Hey. And, and you know what? They don't melt because they're not even real cheese. No, they so do they, melt. Yeah. That's the thing. They become a, almost a sauce. That's, I wouldn't that, call that's that, where you're wrong. I wouldn't call that melting. Whatever that's it is. That's not melting. Okay. That's transferring I'm to something. I'm just telling you. I report you decide. All right, so we so our guest is here, so we're going to take a break. We come back, and we'll have Jace introduce uh, our guest, and Jace won't be alone anymore in the lair. We'll see you after the break. So our good friends at Blaze TV have asked us to share with you uh, how important the the upcoming presidential election is, and it's a lot more than just politics. It's about securing our borders, protecting our communities. And first and foremost, on election day, it's about voting. But also on election night, you're going to want to be a member of Blaze TV so you can watch many of your favorite Blaze TV hosts as they cover the 2024 presidential election. 
The future of the nation is being decided in real time. This is your chance to be a part of something really cool and amazing. This election night, Blaze TV is going to have boots on the ground across the country with their correspondents delivering the pulse of the night straight from where the action is happening. All you have to do is subscribe. You can experience this pivotal night with Blaze TV. Just go to blazeelection.com slash Robertson. You're going to get $40 off your subscription. So it's a great time to join up. BlazeElection.com slash Robertson for $40 off. Check it out. So welcome back. Uh, I thought we were having a guest. Instead, Dad is back. Dad, you, you've never looked better S- since you since you've been sick. Now you, I've noticed you're wearing glasses, but you look great. How Thank do you feel? I feel I feel I feel wonderful. Glad to be back with you guys. You know, I miss you, son. <laughs> you look thirty years in. younger. So he went did. in for back surgery, and he came hey. out. His voice has changed. He looks thirty years younger. <laughs> And Who is I, your doctor? I hear you've learned yeah. how to play the guitar. My goodness. Hey, I'm not kidding. Last time I was in Bozier City, we're playing there tonight. And which um, is where my dad was actually from. Well, I last time I was there, I, I could not get out of my bed because I my back was messed up. Really? And I had to go get surgery. So look at this. Here this is are. this is like it's, it's almost it's weird. almost too much to take in, you know? It's a God but portal. I'm sitting here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you're li- if you're listening, <laughs> yeah. here's the big reveal. It's not Phil. <laughs> it's not Phil. No, it's it's just Crowder. It's Crowder. It's Crowder. It's Crowder. Well, Phil and Crowder, welcome Phil. to the lair. <laughs> this is wonderful. It's a, why it's, did you bring your puppet with you? I saw on Instagram you got this puppet. I do. Have, it's what a little uh, yeah, a little marionette little deal. Yeah, uh, it's it's guy. so I don't have to do TikToks. <laughs> I yeah. don't want to do the dances. <laughs> so we make the puppet do the dances. <laughs> so he's good. Yeah, he's good man. Yeah, I got that figured out, man. You know, actually, I uh, you know, I came here's here's my here's my uh, come to Jesus story. I was seven years old. We we're in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and my parents. My dad was uh, he was he was a disciplinarian, like, and and so he he had man he instilled in me and my brother like you do not go down you don't go down that aisle until you know what you're doing. You got to know what you're doing. Well, they dropped us off at Children's Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and so the adults go somewhere and the kids go somewhere. And there's a dude on stage, and he's got a pur- purple puppet, and, and, and the puppet's name is Eugene. And so he's he's talking to Eugene, and he's like, "Eugene, do you want Jesus in your heart?" And Eugene's like, "Yes, I do." And I'm like, "I want what Eugene's got." And I'm right down that aisle, and and uh, uh, my parents, you know, scoop us up, and we're headed to the hotel after the deal. And I'm in the back seat, and I'm like, "Cry, I'm crying." And my mom's like, "What's wrong, David?" I go, "I'm so sorry." I, I asked Jesus in my heart tonight, <laughs> so I feel like I feel like I came to I came to the Lord under under the under dress <laughs> under the threat of physical. <laughs> just, I, I feel like you know I'm like one of the uh, martyrs almost. <laughs> and so now you're yeah. still doing pep- still doing puppetry. Never <laughs> underestimate the power of puppetry. Is my my point of the story right hey, there? Yeah, yeah. Eugene. I I, years years later. Um, I'm back in Tulsa, Oklahoma, but we're playing, we're playing at the church and, uh, Ricky Skaggs is there and we're, we're with Ricky and I, I, I tell him, you know, in Tulsa is where I, where, this is where I came to Jesus and somebody overhears the story and says, uh, do you know that the pastor of this church, that's the guy that had the, the purple puppet. Do you want to meet him? I'm like, absolutely. So I go meet the pastor <laughs> and then the, I tell the pastor the story and he goes, well, I've got Eugene in my office. Do you want to go? <laughs> he's still working. <laughs> Dude, he's That's still. Good. And then he opens his case, and there's this, you know, this puppet just laying there lifeless. And I'm like, I don't think this is, this doesn't feel right. And he's like, I've got four of them. I'm like, oh, no. Like, there's four of them. That's too much, man. It was hard to take in. Yeah. Did y'all, did he reenact it? Did y'all like have a conversation? No, no, no. I told him, close out? that case up and I don't want to, I don't want to see that. That's, that's like a, you know, lifeless little. I thought he, Crowder was going to say, then he repented again because yeah. it takes a puppet to move his heart. <laughs> Came right back. So, so Crowder, I got to ask you this. All right. Because we were joking about, the, the reason we said you look like dad is because your beard. So, like, you're from Texarkana, That's which true. is right there in our neighborhood. I mean, you're our kind of people. And so, do you, the, the beard's been a part of your deal. So, so what's, the, you just <laughs> now you got to keep it. You, you got Man, stuck here's that what, way. Okay. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. It was the year 2000. I was, 
I was out in Waco, Texas. Um, had, went to school at Baylor University. But uh, it's the year 2000, dawn of the millennium, Y2K. Remember that? Yeah. It's yep. terrifying. Terrifying. You know, I don't know. Computers were going to stop making water or something. I don't know. Our bathtub <laughs> was full of water. And, <laughs> and uh, but, but I thought, man, how many dawns of millenniums am I going to be around for? Probably the one. So I took it on myself to, to make it like a spiritual cleansing moment. And so I, at the time I had this, this weird goatee thing. I don't know what I was doing. I was doing, I thought I was doing something cool, but I was doing this goatee thing. And, uh, I, but I, I, you know, the ball drops, midnight happens, I kiss my wife. Hey, happy new year. Happy new millennium. Uh, hopefully we'll survive. And then I go into our little bathroom and I, 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 big, I, I, I raise her all my hair off, all my, all the stuff off my face. And, and I was going to start this spiritual cleanse. I look at myself in the mirror without hair on me. And I was like, this was not Jesus talking. This was not the Holy Spirit. I don't think this. And, my, and Tony's like, my wife's like, what are you doing in there? And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I didn't tell her anything about this. And so I'm like, this was bad. So I come out. And she, she said, put it back now. And started feeding me like <laughs> prenatal vitamins and making me wash with a what's that like a horse and mane horse and t- mane and tail and oh and so anyway I haven't touched it since then she's the keeper of the beard yeah wow. she's into it and so you know it it comes and goes but it's her uh, you know it's all at her uh, mm. beckoning yeah you know? she'll tell me she'll tell me I see the scissors come out and she's like all right need a trim. But yeah, it's been Jay's here found since. that out as well. So when the show ended, uh, for I think it was for me and me, wasn't it, Jay's? You you shaved your beard. Well, I was gonna shave. That's a handsome man. When he shaved, though, it wasn't. It's not the same. I don't thing. know. Oh, no. I'm hiding behind a. You know, well, he <laughs> had the best the it, best uh, hedges. Uh, barber ever uh, trimmed his hair. Gave me a gave you. A, you you did look good. It, Jay. It was your you wife. cleaned up great. Really? It was my wife. Uh, yeah. No, I felt. Uh, you know what's weird? Because we had just done Duck Dynasty, and the only uh, show that wanted me to join them was that show Naked and Afraid. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a joke. <laughs> I'm getting into my speech here, but uh, no, I I don't know. I felt just really weird about it. I mean, used to you know our story. Even though you can't go to the internet and find the the truth out because there's so much misinformation there. Really? People, well, people uh, fake yeah. news. What I was going to say about with us is, uh, you know, people had all this stuff online and they were like, uh, busted. The, the truth is revealed because somebody in our family posted when we go to the beach, we would all shave every year. And they were like, they're really not bearded families. But we're, our family's the ones that put those pictures online. It's like, <laughs> For a while, once a year, Bottom, we would yeah. we would shave yeah. after hunting season because that's why we had the beards. It's good camouflage; it keeps your face warm. And I mean, that was kind of our thing. But it's Phil, wicking, yeah, yeah, and and Biblical. even even all the benefits. And I'm sure you know. Think how much time we save. That's the thing. Uh, when's the last time somebody tried to mug you? <laughs> Never. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They, no. And so, uh, lots of times they just give you money too. That's just like, hey, you know, exactly. Yeah, I tell the story all the time. Uh, Al, I think told it a few podcasts yeah. ago when we were interviewing to do the show, uh-huh. uh, Duck Dynasty. Willie and I were outside the A and E studio drinking five dollar cups of coffee, you uh-huh. know, and but just yeah. everybody's walking around in New York. And just in a moment, a guy <laughs> dropped some coins in Willie's <laughs> coffee. Yeah, he just had his cup, and he just walked. That's what I'm talking about, man. It's like, yeah. The only like, time I've been accosted is like, oh man, homeless dude stole a car. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, that can't be his car. Like, <laughs> yeah, pull so, over. Anyway, so don't put your faith and trust what you read on the internet. Was the mall of that story? Well, I, it's the first time I've heard that. I'm gonna take that to heart next time I look at the internet. Yeah, so, Crowder, exactly. I was reading, you were talking about being from Texarkana, and you talked about it being a uh, divided town, which I thought was really interesting because it's, you know, in some parts in Texas and part of it's in Arkansas. That's it. Yeah, and and we've been there. I've spoken there many times. And, and we actually, Jace, you know, uh, Jimbo Lindsay, our old pal Jimbo Lean, lives mm-hmm. in Texarkana, so he's there now. You know, I but, just made that connection. Yeah, there's a there's a really good Mexican restaurant on the Uh-oh. Arkansas side. What's the name of it? I yeah, that's remember. our cousin that owns it. 
Oh, really? What's Did it? you what, know what that? You, which one? Are, what are you talking? It's about? right downtown. Uh, it's a really great Mexican. Uh, is it? No, nah, I want to say Posada, but that doesn't sound quite Zapata, right. Z- Zapatos. Zapatos. That's it. Hey, look at that. That's it. Oh my! You've been there? Oh yes. Now, now my, who did you know my that? cousin owns it? So my mom's first cousin, Janie, her husband is the one that owns it, and uh, he used to work at Superior Grill in Shreveport, and that's where he learned how to cook. And so then he started his own restaurant in Texarkana. It's a pot. Well, you can, yeah, you can, you can drink a pitcher of that salsa. Oh man, it's so good. Uh-huh. But anyway, so you were talking about this idea, but when I was reading it, it so resonated with me because we grew up, uh, Jason and I, me more, cause Jason was pretty young in Junction City, Arkansas, which is also Junction City, Louisiana. And right in the downtown, the red light is the dividing line. So if you, you huh, go to the grocery yeah. store in Arkansas, you cross over to, you know, the Dollar General, you're in Louisiana. And so, but you made some really interesting points about that. They kind of led you to this thing about the prodigal son, which I thought was really, really interesting. This, this piece that you wrote that I was reading. And I love that idea about, you, you, you said the word means lavish. Is that right? Pro- from the prodigal son. And we've all had this grace lavished on us. And yet at the same time, you see, we seem to be more divided than ever, um, you know, in terms of a culture. But why would we be when in the prodigal son story, the story is as much for the older brother it is, as it is the younger right. brother, right? To receive yeah. the grace. I just thought it was really, really good. I thought it was a good piece that you wrote. Man, I don't remember that at all, but... <laughs> Really? Sounds great. Yeah. I, don't <laughs> I mean, I know, I know Texture Canada has got that line. It, ours, ours terminates at the, at the post office and there's like literally like a, a, a painted strip on a deal and you can, you know, stand on one side or the other and I, you can't feel anything. <laughs> I think that might be the, the, the point of that one is, is, you know, we're, it, it's just, a, it's just a painted strip and, and you can't feel, you can't feel nothing. One foot in Arkansas, one foot in Texas and, Feels just the same as standing on either side of it. So <laughs> I don't know. So how did your singing career start, man? I, I well, I, as I said, I went to Baylor um, for college, and um, while I was there, I, what I wanted to do was uh, sell insurance. <laughs> I wanted to sell insurance. That's what my dad did. He had he had an insurance agency, an independent insurance it called Dan Crowder Insurance Agency, and I was like, man, this dude's the coolest dude in the world. He had like you know he had paneling on his walls and. The <laughs> behind him, he had like this uh, forest scene wallpaper, and had that had that uh, phone that you could you know rest on your shoulder, and he's doing you know car quotes and whatnot. And I'm like, man, this guy's the coolest dude ever, and I wanna I wanna I wanna take over the family practice, have that nepotistic hookup. I got I got in, so I thought that's what I was going to do. As long as I could pass an insurance exam, I could I could go ahead and get a job when I get with, get done with school. Um, so I was I was there at Baylor studying music. Is what I because I thought it would be fun. It was not fun at all. <laughs> You're stuck in a <laughs> practice room, just you and a piano, like all day, every day. Uh, but a guy, the guy starting this church was like, "Hey, man, I know you're musically inclined. Why don't you help me out uh, with the music on Sunday morning?" So I wasn't like, I wasn't, I wasn't singing. I was just sort of getting getting folks together, getting other college kids to show up, play and sing, uh, picking the songs. That kind like of a worship leader before that was a. I didn't, I I, yeah, I, I called it the uh, music director at MD, okay. right. and, and but here's what happened: is you know it's college kids, so <laughs> they're not going to show up every Sunday. Yeah. So you, you know, th- so somebody wouldn't show up, and the pastors be like, "Well, you're going to have to sing." And I'm like, "Oh, this is a terrible idea," but I guess I guess I'm going to have to sing. And then and then it was about a year in. Hey, uh, we need some we we need some new. New songs. You should write some songs. I'm like, that's a terrible idea. You know, <laughs> like, so anyway, I started writing music about a year into it. And the songs, since we had, uh, you know, a, 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 I guess a transient uh, parishioners, they, they would go back home to wherever they came from and take the songs back, show their their worship leader yeah. or their m- music person. Hey, man, here's a, here's a new song that we, we were singing back, back in Waco, Texas. And so the songs kind of trickled out. And then we get calls like, "Hey, could you come do our ski trip or our, you know, our our conference or whatever?" And because the, the songs uh, yeah. got there before I did, and then we'd follow the songs. And so that's how I'm. At some point, I'm calling home, and I'm like, "Dad, I think it's going to be a, be a, be a while." Yeah. <laughs> Here we are still. <laughs> what, what, still was the fir- what was the first? What was the first song that blew up? What was the well? First one? It was actually the first one I wrote 
was called uh, You Alone. And um, I, I was terrified. Man, I, that first that first Sunday, I was just, you know, you're, you're, you're forming people's ideas about, about how they think about God, yeah. the, the divine, how they think about their interactions with each other in light of the divine. Um, it, it's just, it was, it's a really weighty moment. And, and so the Sunday we do it, um, I was, my roommate at the time was my best friend growing up from Texarkana. His dad was the music director at the church I grew up in, First Baptist Church, Texarkana, Texas. And I, I'm, I'm, man, I'm telling him, like, I'm so nervous about this. And, and so we do it. And then after the deal, I'm like, man, what do you think? How, how do you think it went? And he's like, what? I go, <laughs> doing the song that we wrote, like that I wrote, like that. And he goes, man, I wouldn't call that a song necessarily. <laughs> that was, it was like three chords and you just said the same thing over and over. And I was like, oh man. Well, that song is what led me, or it got out, it got out to uh, Louis Giglio, who is now my pastor in, oh, really? in Atlanta, Georgia at, at uh, Passion City Church. But that song found its way to Louis and the Passion Conference, which is a bunch of college kids. Um, and it was like the second year they were, they were getting together down in Austin, and he he called me. I was at, at the church and uh, picked up the phone. He's like, I'm Louis Giglio. And I'm like, ah, I know who you are. And and he says, hey, we got this song, You Alone, that we want to put on a Passion album. We're going to do it live with these college kids that are down there in, in, uh, in Austin, Texas. And I'm like, that sounds wonderful. And that so that relationship is that he's, he's, the, he's the label head of the record label I'm at, Six Steps Record. He's the president of the of Six oh. Steps Record, which is part of Capital uh, Music Group. But and then his wife Shelly is my manager, uh -huh. and so that one song, that song that my, my roommate said was terrible. <laughs> yeah, changed your life. <laughs> it, it changed my life. It's, it's why I'm sitting right here right now. That's did you tell him he was true. wrong? Did you, did you ever go back I, to him? And no, say, I didn't rub you, it in. You got just, that one wrong. Yeah, he knows. He's out there. He knows. I want to say on the re I want to say on the record, uh, Crowder, that w coming into an office thinking I want to buy insurance and I see you behind the desk, <laughs> I'm thinking, nah, nah. <laughs> dude. I was giving car quotes at like age eleven. <laughs> They're like, I talked to this really nice female. <laughs> well, so where did the kind of rock and roll folksy vibe? What what? Where did that come from? It was, I mean, it had to be something from your childhood or teenage. Yeah, um, I mean. Because that's really why I like your music, because that was my background, because my dad wasn't a Christian, so we're listening to Pink Floyd Eagles, and yeah. Credence Clearwater Revival, which is oh, why I like Mac Wow. We were talking about him before we started. Uh, you know, that vibe, I was thought, oh, this is Christian music? Yeah. And You know, at the time, I was when I was starting to make the music, it was, you know, at, in a college in a college setting, um, Dave Matthews band was huge oh, yeah. at the time. I remember. That was a big, uh, and Pearl Jam, but Pearl Jam was my oh. deal, man. Eddie, Eddie Vedder. Vedder. Eddie oh, Vedder yeah. was my, check this out. That dude taught me how to surf. Eddie Vedder. I just met randomly on a beach in Hawaii. But what is surfing really? Just getting on a it's, board? Yeah, you're, you're, out. yeah, you're just, yeah. you're, you're just. <laughs> was he, was he up. Pearl Jam when, was he doing Pearl Jam when you met, was it, he already famous and. Oh yeah. This is like, this is like after he's like hero for me. Um, this is probably, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. And I'm like, this dude, this dude taught me really how to, how to, how to do what I do. I, I went, I was, I was asking all these people like, how do I, how do I lead, um, a group of people that are gathered in a congregation setting. H how do I do this? And they tell me, hey, you got to be, you know, really careful about the key, you know, keys that you pick. So girls sing here, boys sing here. Uh, man, I went to I went to a Pearl Jam concert up in Dallas, and every single person in that place was at the top of their lungs <laughs> <Yeah>. singing along. <laughs> you know, no yeah. lyrics on the screen or nothing. They just <laughs> singing their heads yeah. off. And I'm like, man, that's what we want to do. We want to do something that stirs the soul. That, yeah. that just causes you to, to yeah. erupt. I mean, it's music is just it's it's part of how we're, yeah. we're put together. To and you have the best subject on planet Earth. Oh, could Either. you sing about anything better? No. Yeah. So, but, but it that, forms your imagination in a way that that a, 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 a didactic sermon just can't. I mean, you you talk about forming people's idea who God is and who what the kingdom is. I mean, there. I mean, it is one of the most powerful mediums for forming. Which is why it's terrifying too, you know, because yeah, you, you know, is. you know that it's, it's sneaky. And so, it's, and it's also, you know, 
I don't trust it. <laughs> Those moments that you're you know caught up in something, um, they they feel great. They do form you. You do get you you do get um, you know some sense of of understanding of what's you know intellectually difficult to to grasp. But uh, I trust the moments when you're stuck in traffic more than I do when we're all singing at the same time. You, you see who's on the throne when you're when you're upset at the car in front of you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that one. Yeah. That one gets me. Of course, I learned that in Willie's interview that you don't drive. I man, I gave up. Atlanta, Georgia is not where you want to go. Oh, drive. Man. But You're not, so look, right. what are you talking I, I, about? I mean, I drive, but it's like I have a I have like a sixty four International Harvester. But it's like driving a lawn. It feels like it's trying to kill you. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's like driving a lawnmower. So I just drive. You know, I just drive around the neighborhood. I don't go anywhere important. I just. Yeah. You know, get out and see the sunshine. I just thought it's funny because you, like me, we we look homeless, and uh, now you're basically <laughs> a hitchhiker, which is we were talking about yeah, growing Uber, in Christ, man. you know, and you think he was homeless and was basically you know walking around looking, you know, I mean, it's it's weird, uh, but uh, so I thought that was interesting. But another thing in that interview that I listened that I wanted you to share because he asked you what like venues that. Uh, stood out in your mind that you've been able to perform. Yeah. And I don't I, know if I you told remember him about that Fillmore. Yeah, I told him about the Fillmore. Yeah, I wanted you to share that. Dirty Dave, I... man. Dirty Dave. Well, first of all, what I didn't tell him is uh, it took us a really long time. I wanted to play the Fillmore. It's a, it's one of those, I mean, classic rock and roll venue. Everybody's played there. It's in know? San Francisco, right? San Francisco. Yeah. And and I it probably took us three years that we kept asking him, like, Oh, we see, y'all were asking them. I was wondering oh. how you wound up there. Oh, man. And, and we, it's we, basically we, just a bar, right? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it, it only holds like about, I guess, 1,000 people, you know, 1,100 people or something. So it's really just a small, tight little box of a thing. Um, but but it's so, I mean, it's, it's historic. And and we, we kept trying, and they were like, no, we don't need no church music in here. Like, they kept, yeah. nope, 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 nope. That's not, this is, this is not the place for that. Um, man, that day, that day was so special. Uh, everybody that was working there. Um, but how did you even get in? Do you know? I mean, there's one oh, yeah. day they finally just said, okay. Yep. We, it's because we just kept, we kept knocking and knocking and knocking. And finally they're like, <laughs> all right. I, and they were just like, this is a terrible idea. Things sold out so quick. So they were like, oh, well, maybe, okay. Maybe, maybe we're wrong. And Isn't then. That funny how the world, if they make money, they're like, okay. <laughs> they're well, fine with it. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we had a show that kind of was like that. <laughs> but dude, the, the guy that was running the thing, um, at the end of the day, after he's been around, you know, all of our crew and 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 whatnot, um, he grabbed me and was like, "Bro, uh, and he was like a bouncer, right?" Yeah, that, that this is two different stories. Oh, okay. the, this guy was the like kind of run run the whole venue. The Dirty Dave story that I told uh, to to Willie is a different deal. But this right. guy, this guy's running the place, and he goes, "Man, I don't know what happened in there, but y'all sang something out like it, it felt heavy, and now." You sing, you sing whatever's here out. It it went out tonight. I'm like, yeah. oh, really? And he goes, yeah, you're gonna have to come back every year to 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 cleanse this place. And he didn't he didn't know all the words about yeah. it, but I was like, yeah. that's called the Holy Ghost, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. that's what man. I loved about that story because you talk about the dirty Dave who was a bouncer or whatever, and he's like, man. I'm Looked up, and I was crying. Oh, he's like, like, man, well, I ain't cried, and well, what, what, my mama died. Is he, what he said. Yeah, he was actually like, what happened? He was trying to explain the phenomena, and you were like, same it's thing. the Holy Spirit, man. And it's, it's so cool, man. That's that's what I I love about you know when you were saying earlier, like it's the best thing to be singing about, and yeah. and there's a there's a, a tangible uh, experience that happens for even people that don't you know that aren't of our faith, and they they're like, what was that, and it's like it's the people of God singing to God, and there's yeah, something. Yeah. There's something. And the the beauty of it is being able to get the gospel out in different ways. So I, I was thinking about that, you know, Crowder, because you you mentioned that about the weight of it, and I feel the same way mm. about about preaching, because I'm pretending to speak on behalf of the Almighty, and I'm just like. You know, I feel the way anytime I'm up front, I might get me out of the way. But I thought about I met a young man uh, a couple of Sundays ago at our church, and he talked about going to see The Blind, which is the movie that Zach produced with with Will and Corey and, and, and you know, about which our we film right below your neck. Yeah, of the yeah exactly. Was was right in that area in between the, you know, the Shreveport area. And, you know, this man told me, he said, you know, I just I watched the movie and I went home. I couldn't quit crying. 
Mm. And he said, you know, I just kind of been a lukewarm Christian most of my life, living off the faith of my parents, now my wife. He said, but something about it just tapped deeply into my soul. And all of a sudden, you know, I felt like I need to go all in for Jesus. And I thought, you know, that's another genre, mm. you know, something like that. Just seeing the gospel on a movie screen by watching dad's life change, of course, and a change in our family's destiny. So I feel the same way about worship. It's it's different things that God uses to penetrate the hearts of people, but it's the same message. It's just Jesus and what he did it, did for us and how he's playing that out. Yeah, you didn't know this, uh, cause, and my lovely wife, because uh, I asked her, because we knew we had met somewhere. Right. Well, you weren't sure, but I said, I know I met you, and I thought it was in Monroe like 15 years ago, and you thought it was in Virginia 10 years right. ago. Uh, and I just got the picture. It was actually in Shreveport, uh-huh. and it was five years ago. Five? So, no way. Yeah. So what that's what that? I said, man. COVID, COVID math. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. COVID look, I can't do that. What's scary is this up. picture. Look, we literally look like twins. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> we okay. I take it back. We're handsome. We're yeah. handsome. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. someone would have come up in that moment, my wife, they would have probably said, "Now, which one are you married to?" I mean, it's kind of shocking. We'll, we'll share this picture. We'll that share the picture. She dug out. Yeah. That's but a, I've actually that's used impressive. you as an illustration Uh-oh. in my speech. I only have one speech. It's never the same, but it is about Jesus. But I say this all the time because you know we're introducing Jesus to people, and I go to a lot of worldly venues. Also, I've been to places where I was literally the only sober person there uh-huh. and uh and i do my little duck call demonstration that's my musical instruments you know but yep. then i share jesus and uh you know it's so it's interesting because the tension in the room and people are like should i put down my beer or you know it, it it's like it's weird but i in that moment you know i'm exhilarated because i'm like these people need to hear about jesus and and nobody says a negative word it, it's amazing but I'll I'll have them uh you know just imagine what God looks like because most people, when you ask that question, they either see an old man, you know, with a gavel re- ready to strike mm-hmm. him dead, or they say light because there's a verse about that. Uh, but the number one answer, and I'll ask them what they see. The number one answer is nothing, it, and it's like, well, no wonder there's no presence in your 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 mind just goes blank because this is based on faith, you know. And so, uh, and then I usually hold up the Bible and say, look, this is not a rule book. This is not a collection of fairy tales. Uh, this is not just where you get information. It's a love story. And it's, it's God revealing himself in a person named, mm-hmm. named Jesus. And so when you close your eyes and picture God, you see this Jewish carpenter 2,000 years ago. That's kind of my, my sermon there. But, I, I but like I, then I say, well, it, but if you're into pictures, you can watch The Chosen. Because they give you a visual image. Because now a lot of people, when I say, what did you see? They see that guy from The Chosen. And I'm like, that'll work. But I say, well, if you're into music, there's a song out there by Crowder called Red Letters. Uh Uh-oh. Because when you you came out with that song, that's why I liked it so much. Because when I read, that's how I came to Jesus. I literally read the red letters, and it revealed a picture in my mind of a human Mm. who is God named Jesus, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to follow him. So I'm giving you kudos on that song. Man, that's it, amazing. It re- and that's why I put that in my speech. And uh, I'm like, or you can read the Bible. He has a book for you if you're a reader. So if you're into pictures, you're into music, or you're a reader, I've got three <laughs> <You> options <laughs> to see Jesus. So that's I incredible. You, I thought you Which is the point. Of, that's, I appreciate which is the that. Point, that's the point of what we've been talking about in Colossians. I mean, the fullness of deity lives in a, in a body. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you think about to that point, how do you, how do you see who God is, you see, in Jesus. That's the that is that's Colossians well, it, one and two. Yeah, exactly. I've always said it's a love story. It reveals Jesus. But I actually heard a sermon uh, this morning because we're we've been talking about how to mature in Christ. You know, mm-hmm. have these characteristics of Jesus in us, which takes a lot longer than just the stop doing wrong. Yeah, that's it's, not what it's yeah, about, right? Exactly. And uh, he, I wrote this quote down because I thought that goes in perfect with what what I say. It says the Bible is a portal into God's presence in in reference. He said, it's not just a book of information. It's Mm. a portal through Jesus into God's presence. And I thought, oh, that's that's good. I like that. That's incredible. That's what's what's amazing about scripture is, you know, know, as you said, you kind of ruined the the ending. It leads to this person 
But that man, that that red letter deal, man, it's that yeah, there's a scarlet thread that starts in you know Genesis one one. I mean, it's all leading to God's in, in, inhabiting and and Emmanuel with us. That's what's that's what's a mind blow, man. Oh, I it hope, really I mean, is. And a lot of your songs, that Old Testament that. too. It's that's some fun oh. stuff. So, so let's assume, talk about the new yeah, album. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. almost out of time. Let's talk about the new album. So you, uh, uh, it's like a, I think you got a trilogy going here, right? Yes. Yeah, well, I've always done it in threes. Well, yeah. it, here's what happens: is you you sign a I sign a, a, a record contract, and it's it's for three albums. So from the bar- very beginning, I'm like. I should probably know what I'm going to do. <laughs> it feels like if you're signing on paper, I'm going to do this, then you should know what you're going to do. So I've always done it in threes. This 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 uh, uh, little little out, outfit is uh, it was started with uh, promise, and we did milk and honey. That was the first one of this little thing. Um, it, we called it milk and honey, and then now we're at the exile. So I do promise, exile, return, and um, that's kind of just I just need a I just need like a box to put stuff in. And so I knew yeah. that this is a, this is the trajectory of what I want to say. And the first part is the promise. And man, when you're when you're locked down in COVID, it was not difficult at all to write and sing and talk about something like surely it's going to be better than it is right now. And so <laughs> we got there's promise on the other side of this thing. And then exile though, um, man, these songs are more um, less they're less vertical and more horizontal, more talking to each other almost like hey. Here's here's what's going on right now in in our in our culture in our in our time and space and the return though is is meant to be really vertical so coming yeah. back well I didn't figure out that the exile and the return were happening at the same time I was writing these songs and I'm like man this doesn't fit on the exile this is not at all what I want to do for the exile and then but I love this song and it took me probably about halfway through the exile that I realized ah they're coming at the same time and mm. how great is that. In ex- some of the best, some of the best stories in Scripture are are Daniel in the lion's den. That oh, yeah. that's it. That's in exile. I yeah. mean, that's you know he shuts the mouth of lions, and it, because he was because he was he believed prayer was uh, effective. The efficacy of of it was worth worth uh you know getting thrown in a den of lions yeah. for. There's yeah. a song on there called "Somebody Prayed." Um, oh, I, yeah, I love that, man. That's yeah. like so. I, I I feel like uh, what's coming is exciting too because um, wouldn't he give you something to sing about even when you're you know on the on, Ezekiel's on the side of the river and heaven opens up? Wouldn't that give you something to sing about? So I'm I'm excited about this season. We're carrying the exile songs right now, but the return was happening at the same time the exile was happening. Oh, I listened to the whole album and I love that uh somebody prayed cuz I just thought it was clever when how you just you see something happen that's beautiful and awesome but the perspective of the song was well, well somebody, man, that was, so, somebody that prayed. One, that one came out of, you know, um speaking of uh social media, um it was right after right after um the Nashville shooting. We were on tour, we had a lot of friends that were really it, it it hit close and uh people were carrying that thing speaking of heavy they were carrying that moment really heavily um kids at the school and um you know parents that were part of that so all of a sudden you see on social media people you know sending hey thoughts and prayers and immediately getting beat down like if you if you come if you come at thoughts and prayers yeah and you're you're hating on that um it's because you don't believe that that works at all. It's because exactly. you don't believe that there's anything to it. You just, yeah. I mean, in the worst, it's or in the least, I guess I should say, it's 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 you're just trying to empathize and 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 let people know, I feel I feel what you're feeling. But in the best, it's because you think God still interacts with history, exactly. and that when you when you hit your knees and when you beg Him to move, He moves, and I've seen it happen over and over. And so that was kind of like a fist to the air type songs really defiant songs. plus I, our old our old pal dylan scott is on there he's from our oh, neck was too which he's he's amazing talent so look we're out of time we crowder we got to have you back some next time you're back in our area we'll come back for some more tales i would love it see you how you just gotta look about you that i feel a comfort and a peace <laughs> I feel, yeah i feel like i could just stay right here move in yeah <laughs> That couch over there, too, is the most comfortable face I've ever sat in my life. Yeah. That's pretty right good. Is, I'd take that with me if I could. Much of our studio audience has slept there. All right, Crowder, 
Best of luck to you, brother. Check Man, it's David y'all. Crowder. When you Google it, make sure it's you get <laughs> Google David Crowder. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.